So we're going to start the workshop part of our evening here at 7 o'clock, and then uh, at 7.30 we'll move into our regular agenda. And for workshop this evening, our city planner, uh, Natalie Quinn, is going to share with us uh, some insights on something called complete streets. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was such a thing as incomplete streets, mm. so we'll learn. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think you're going to share with us just kind of a quick status on what's happening with the Fishkill Corridor Committee. I tie it in at the end. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Great. Um, okay. So we'll start. Um, complete streets. I maybe, I assume at this point that everyone has heard of this term, but maybe not. Um, I will define it. If, uh, oh, there we go. So City of Beacon actually has a complete streets resolution um, that was adopted in 2016, setting guidelines for complete streets um, in the city of, uh, I said city of Poughkeepsie, didn't I? City of Beacon. Um, I, I just came from there. Strike one. Um, and yeah, <laughs> don't keep track. Uh, and so I think the first whereas clause in your own resolution, I think, is um, there's a number of definitions. It's kind of like sustainability um, and things like that, that you, you see different definitions, but they all come down to the same thing. Uh, and what I'll summarize this is looking at users, at all users of the street in all modes of transportation, right? I think um, I wanted to do this presentation today because I think it ties into a lot of what we've been talking about with the parking regulations um, and aspects like that in terms of we are kind of in a, a mind shift, um, a mindset shift in the nation of going from thinking about automobiles and how to get automobiles from point A to point B and where to store automobiles to what we know are all the other users of the street and how they may use the street in the public right away. Um, and I think that was captured in the, in the resolution and the guidelines. So there are five principles um, that to the Beacon Complete Streets um, regulations, and we'll kind of go through um, the, first, the first four of these in a little bit of detail. So like I said, the key aspect is designing for all users, right? Um, pedestrians, um, uh, ADA accessibility, bikes, buses, and car traffic as well, right? Uh, deliveries, trucks, if you're in industrial areas, that's a user of that space. So you kind of have to analyze the space that you're in um, and think about who the users of those streets are before you start thinking about, is my street complete or incomplete? Um, and then, so this comes into context, context uh, sensitivity is the second principle of your own complete streets regulations, uh, which I think gets into a little bit of thinking about those users, right? There's a number of tools um, that we'll go through in a minute for how to make streets more complete. Not all of them are feasible or appropriate for all streets um, or necessary, right? Depending on who is using those streets. So the image you see on the left there is kind of, this looks, it's like all of the things thrown on there, right? There's the, there's the, there's the brick crosswalk, there's bike lanes, there's sidewalks, there's street trees, there's a bus, there's cars. Um, so this is kind of all users in this space. That's a very wide road. Not all roads are that wide. And so you don't always have all that space to um, think about. So sometimes you have to make trade-offs. And then again, you know, on the right, just context um, sensitive is not all areas or levels of traffic or roadways demand a bike lane or demand sidewalks, um, depending if it's a rural character or suburban character, kind of what that neighborhood is or what that area is in the urban form there. A complete street may be different depending on the context. Uh, so these, I pulled these images straight out of uh, Dutchess County Transportation Council does a lot of work on complete streets and we'll get into some of the work they've done here in Beacon, uh, but some of the components of how do we start to think about what a complete street is. So um, I think top left corner is thinking about how do we connect this into networks? What are the connections be between different roads and different modes of transportation? Um, as well as what are the networks connecting different assets within the community? Um, a tool that I think gets talked about a lot is in the top right hand corner is a road diet, um, what we call. So a lot of we have found that a lot of roadways are built with excessive width of lanes, uh, right, where a car is maybe 10 and a half feet wide, 
um, and could survive with, you know, or, or less than that actually, could survive with 11 and a half or 12 foot lanes. We sometimes see 13, you know, foot lanes. Um, that's kind of the picture in the right hand side of that top right corner, or the left hand side of that top right corner where they're just an excessive amount of roadway where there could be other amenities in that space, a median to make it more easy to cross, sidewalks, on-street parking, um, which slows traffic. Bottom left is um, very often used tools of high visibility crossings, whether that's just simply striping the crosswalk, which you'd be surprised how often that is absent from roadways, uh, just having that marked out. Um, to bump outs for buses, uh, signage, uh, just kind of saying yield to pedestrians. And then the other aspect of comfort and interest, I think we get into talking about a lot with the planning board is the urban form along those streets and how is that creating a space that makes the street feel um, comfortable and interesting to walk along, which makes it complete. And then this, I love this slide from, this is from DCTC's presentation as well, just about how important the details are, right? So top left corner, yes, that is a striped crossing. It is about, I think, 45, 60 feet, you know, like it's a significant length, so, and the um, curbs are very rounded, so it incentivizes cars to kind of just spin around that corner really quickly, so the tool is there, but it's not properly implemented in order to, it's still, this is an intersection designed for cars, automobiles with pedestrians as kind of the afterthought there is what that image is. Um, and then I think we talk about this more and more these days about um, ADA accessibility in these areas and you know this comes down to everything about proper drainage in, every, in, in, in locations of where water is puddling that can make it impossible <coughs> to use the ramp that we put in place um, for those folks who may have mobility challenges um, and then you know uh, disrepaired sidewalks. Um, as well as amenities for other transit modes um, like bikes or bus shelters. Um, so the little details um, is what it really comes down to. Uh, the other aspect, this is kind of getting back to your own complete streets uh, regu um, resolution, is that complete streets should be routinely addressed by all departments. Um, and that includes the planning board um, listed here, kind of thinking about how to use complete street practices at a regular part of everyday operations. The images in the bottom here are from the current project that the city is working on right now for Teller and Fishkill Avenue um, in terms of making, they are making what I would say complete street improvements along that roadway. Um, those plans are available on the city's website. Um, so those are just some images there about how the city is integrating this work um, in their road improvements. And then I think uh, one of the, I guess it's not so recent, it's 2018, but where uh, Dutchess County Transportation Council assisted City of Beacon in thinking about a complete street on uh, Beekman Street. Um, so I just wanted, there is a, there is a report and recommendations for this, uh, both for, you know, and what I think was really interesting about this study is it's integrated both within potential improvements in the roadway, in the street, and then those recommendations were also taken into the Linkage District um, zoning code as well to, again, set the parameters for urban form in this area uh, to help make this street more complete. And then this is my, my quick update on, there's an ongoing effort right now for uh, the remainder of kind of, or all of Fishkill Avenue. Like I said, there's a portion of Fishkill Avenue that is under current, um, or will be under uh, renovations, but there is a committee. Um, I think this ma matter was brought to this board um, towards the end of 2023, where I think they started thinking about zoning regulations for this district. And I think where that went from there is let's take a more comprehensive look. Let's do a committee that's going to look not only just at zoning, but also things like uh, complete street improvements in this area, connectivity um, to, I always say it wrong, Matawan, the street that the high school's on and uh, oh, Camp Beacon, yeah. Matawan. Um, so connections to that, again, thinking about connections between networks. So this committee's in the very beginning. Um, they've had, they just started meeting in, uh, I think they've had three meetings so far. There is a page on the city's website, um, Fishkill Avenue Concepts Committee, where you can kind of go read about who's on the committee, what they're doing, and then there is a means for us. We're trying to get um, materials up there posted. So right now it's just the committee's been meeting, and what I'm trying to show here is doing a lot of existing conditions, like paying attention to the details of what's in place now, 
um, what the zoning is now, what are the you know impediments to pedestrians and things like that in the area. So we're in they're in the kind of uh, information collection phase. Um, but happy, I'll do another I think update for you all once they get to the point of having uh, recommendations. So Great. that is my very brief overview of uh, complete streets. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, I'm just curious, kind of tying, you know, and I like that slide you had there just in terms of whole city responsibility around mm -hmm. this concept and, of course, others yeah. relative to zoning. Um, just tying together a little bit, for, you know, for example, let's use um, 52. Um, if there were to be improvements, obviously it's the city's responsibility to follow our own charter, right? Mm -hmm. When thinking about uh, how to re-plan like that route, yeah. intersections, crosswalks, all of the things you talked about. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about them as, for example, applications come to the planning board these principles tie into our purview just in terms of how they might play into um, what things we want to look out for in yeah. our reviews as they relate to uh, complete streets. Yeah, um, I think we, I think the planning board and reviewing site plan concepts, right? So a lot of, I think when complete streets is being discussed, it's often focused on the public right away, which is yeah. the responsibility of either the municipality or the transportation um, NISDOT or um, entities like that. But I think what we were talking about earlier is that comfort and interest is largely shaped of a roadway, is largely shaped by the urban form that yeah. is along it. So I think what the planning board can look at is placement of buildings becomes very important. Um, when someone is walking down the street, what are they next to? Are they next to a building, looking into shops, looking into windows, or are they next to a parking facility? You know, is it well lit? Um, I think you can think about, is there shade trees? Are there trees that mm -hmm. are maybe provided on individual parcels that will provide shade for, if there is a sidewalk, pedestrians on that sidewalk? Um, I think another thing that comes into play quite often is turning vehicles or turning movements for vehicles, right? And that comes into the kind of pedestrian safety and thinking about the pedestrian. Yep. How many times do they have to cross over an area where they have to be aware of where cars are coming from and how fast they're going to be coming and if they're going to see them or not? So I think thinking about, I think what we talk a lot about when looking at site plans is limiting the number of curb cuts where vehicles are entering or exiting a private parcel um, mm -hmm. as a means to impact the street. Um, and then landscaping, right? I think we talk a lot about landscaping on the front side of parcels and how that will create a more enjo enjoyable walking environment for pedestrians who may be using that sidewalk. Yeah. And then Route 52 is, you know, it, there is only sidewalk on one side. Um, it is a limited road width. It's not, it's yeah. not like there's extreme amount of ex excess uh, roadway there necessarily to be adding in everything you want to add in so I think what this committee is gonna is really trying to focus in on now is the users of this space yeah. um, and the and the land uses in this area right there's a lot of industrial land uses that require trucks and stuff so thinking about the appropriate ro road widths for that and if you only have so much road space to play with what are the amenities that are most important yeah. uh, for that roadway yeah does so, that answer the question? Yeah, a little bit. I'm, yeah. So just going a little bit deeper, for example, if, if well, does the, would the committee have purview over, like you mentioned street trees, for example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Over recommendations to the city, for example, that any improvements that happen include <coughs> a sidewalk on the east side, street trees on both, or is that, I'm just curious where the, yeah. Where the city kind of purview or responsibility stops and then the private property owner uh, begins. Yeah. Right? So just in terms of what, the, what that means in terms of cohesive placemaking. Right? Yeah, it's hard. Um, well, first I'll just say, so the committee, the Fishco Avenue Concepts Committee is very much just a non-decision-making body, right? No, no, they will, I know. It's, they it's will always create recommendations. recommendations that go yep. to the council and to the administration to consider. Um, and then, I mean... I, this is maybe where we bring the attorney and I, the, the municipality should be looking at just the public, like their, their, um, 
their ability to make improvements themselves, I think, stops at the public right away, right where the sure. private boundary sure, starts. Sure, sure. Then you use zoning as the tool. I totally get it. So yeah. then, so then, what I'm hearing is, this is a lot like what we experienced on the Comprehensive Plan Committee. The, the, this committee specifically could make recommendations to the city mm -hmm. for you know a comprehensive improvement to the full public right of way that includes X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to the city and, uh, as to whether they're going to adopt that part of it, right? Yeah. And then yes, it tr and then also they have purview over use, zoning, you know, bulk, height, and all of that stuff. Yeah. So that's going to set the new zoning. Yeah. Sort of an extension of that. Um, and I'm assuming this is still in context of complete streets. Um, and I'm, I'll just say this rather than a question, a, a more of a statement. I hope mm -hmm. that also they'll be, they'll be looking at. Um, just appropriateness in terms of aesthetics similar to what we looked at in terms of Main Street and some con either some consistency or some mm -hmm. guides, guide mm -hmm. rails, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's definitely a topic of conversation. I think the interesting aspect is that Fishkill Avenue, Route 52, is not Main Street, right? I think there could be similarities between it, but... As totally. a neighborhood within the community, it kind of functions different, has different yeah. users. Uh, so I think the committee is trying to be sensitive to that. And I think there's a lot of um, good aspects about like the design guidelines and, sure. and um, the feeling of walking on Main Street that you would like to bring to Fishco Avenue where yeah. as much as appropriate. But not, not to say, you know, you want a complete facsimile of Main Street. It's yeah. more, you know, there is ample opportunity to improve, for absolutely. example, tree cover. Yeah, absolutely. That's always, no matter whether it's Main Street or Or sidewalks that are more than two feet right. that people feel come, that aren't yeah. blocked by mailboxes and, and hydrants. And, and the character yeah. becomes a little less industrial commercial. Right. You know, yeah. Churches, places of worship, apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's going to be more demand for those kind of amenities. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, residential even. Yeah. I mean, I still see people walking up and down and biking up and down that road all the time you know that use it now yeah, so it's a, even it's a conduit there's res for yeah. sure yeah a lot of people that can't own cars who live nearby mm -hmm. and the services are that they are you know don't have place. <laughs> there are a lot of people that can't own cars that live on Fishkill yeah and walk there uh, as part of you know exercise and a lot of other things and I think it's gonna be something we should be sensitive to absolutely um, I have a question, and it, I don't know if it, it might be more Jennifer's uh, view of the Route 52, like how I, there's this, you know, effort going on to rethink that area mm -hmm. and what we, you know, what the city, you know, wants it to, func how it wants it to function, what it wants it to look like. Um, and, you know, in the meantime, we have projects coming up, and so how do we um, not preclude uh, you know the developments of the committee mm -hmm. by you know reviewing projects currently in that zone yeah I mean I'll say when I still think there's tools for you in your zoning code that allow you to think about how private development on route 52 on Fishkill. there's multiple zoning districts along this route right but there's your landscaping guidelines your lighting guidelines um, there's, there's, there's guidelines in the zoning code already about uh, traffic circulation and pedestrian safety. So there's things in there that I think will definitely be, or potentially be strengthened through the committee, but I think the, there's still tools in there for the planning board to be using um, when reviewing those. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, no, I think that's right on target. And I think um, you know, once the committee is done with its work and it makes its recommendations back to the city council, and certain recommendations then become incorporated into your zoning code, that's when you'll really have, you know, the sort of the, the ammunition behind <laughs> your recommendations. But you do have a lot of flexibility right now with the provisions that you have in your code. Yeah. yeah. I think th sort of looking at, <laughs> you know, the interim now between new zoning code, um, you know, one wonders what are the opportunities for something to be built outside of what you know, for example, a committee mm -hmm. might come up with over the next couple of months and make recommendations on, right? Mm -hmm. So we've had these situations in the past where you've got what? development waiting to happen in an area that we're looking to rezone and the two are competing, right? Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, right now we've had one significant recent, you know, development come before us on 52. 
And you're right. I thought we, we had a lot of really good mechanisms for helping to shape what already was a, a, a very good application. Yeah. And at least the two currently are mostly, to my thinking, cosmetic. Mm-hmm. Or like short term. Yeah. And short term. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, the hope is that we can we can get to a point where we have recommendations and new re- new zoning yeah. before something happens based on old zoning that we didn't necessarily you know anticipate or want yeah. right right so at, at what point would it be um a, uh i don't know wise or consider like putting a pause on cons- uh, you know looking at development in that area while the committee is doing its work and you know the rezoning it's not it's not a quick you know process so what triggers you know what would trigger that consideration that's a difficult thing because you're, you're talking about a moratorium against um, further development and there's always you know there's trade-offs um, you know you, you don't want to stymie the productive use of, of the properties within the city um, or you know preclude folks from making improvements to their properties but yeah you don't want to kind of cut your nose off to spite your face and have projects move forward that might be um, inconsistent with what the ultimate uh, zoning laws are going to be so it's that's a it's a policy determination ultimately for the city council to make um, as far as when that would be appropriate Um, but it would be in the form of a local law adopting a moratorium against right. development. Yeah, and it's hard because there's always tweaks and changes like parking yeah. regulations, right? We're also, the council planning board have been weighing in on revisions to parking regulations for the last few months. And, you know, there's always kind of tweaks and changes that are going to impact development across the city in different areas. Um, so I think exactly to Jen's point is there's, there's pros and cons and trade-offs that get considered by the legislative body and the administration. Yeah. Just got to see how it all plays out, right? Mm-hmm. Could have taken that off. Um, well, thank you. That was very helpful. Any other questions of Natalie? We actually have a full house tonight. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. <laughs>